رسول الله ابتغاء مرضات الله وقربه وثوابه سبحانه وتعالى praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most worthy of praise and the only one really entitled to praise and we ask our Lord most high to send copious and unlimited and eternal blessings and salutations upon our beloved Prophet Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam and my and we acknowledge the traditional owners of, our, of this land and we pay our respects to the elders past and present so I think before we go further I think it's important to look at the definition of the word shukr so in the Arabic the Arabs they say it's al-arfan bil ihsan wa nashrahu. So it's it's for it's for one to know that they've been given ihsan excellence, something that that they don't maybe ihsan maybe one doesn't deserve. It's something that a person maybe they do deserve it, maybe they don't deserve it. So when if you if you if you go at work for at a job and and it's fifty dollars and twenty bucks an hour and you get paid twenty dollars an hour, that's just your due. That's what you're entitled to. But if you get someone gives you an extra five dollars an hour, that's ihsan. That's going over and above what what one's duty is. And really, that's that's the issue that we have as millennials is the sense of entitlement because everything's easy for us, right? Going back to the things we always discuss. That our needs in life are taken care of. We don't have any needs. Our concern isn't eating. Our concern isn't running away from danger. Remember the fight and flight? Remember we talked about the sympathetic um, nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system, the fight and flight, you know, the, the reaction. That's what they're there to make us survive. Right? We get scared and nervous or we, we, you know, we, we fight. In other words, our adrenaline, our adrenaline glands open up. Our cortisol pumps through our body so we can get alert to fight or run away. We don't need that anymore. Like in the life we're living, maybe when you're crossing the road and you're crossing against the little man that's there and you're dodging traffic, that's probably or well, someone jumps out in front of you in their car. Other than that, uh, I know when you're in the surf or something, trying not to drown or you know doing a dangerous sport. But other than that, other than really driving in traffic, I can't really think of any other examples. If anyone can help me, I'd be I'd be appreciative. There's no real examples when we need that 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 nervous system to act for us. So, what's it doing there? Now we've got a system that Allah's created in us that we're not using. And so, what do we use it? Where does it go? To our emotions. And unfortunately, that is creating creating for us a sense of entitlement. I should eat. Why shouldn't I eat? Not only should I eat. But if I go to, let's say, the fish markets or somewhere, I have to have lobster. I can't just have, you know, calamari rings or, or, or fish and chips or something. I have to have a lot. It's got to be or Balmain bug or something top of the range. I can't just have, you know what I mean, the normal food. I can't just have, you know, the normal pizza. It's got to be the, you know, extra large with all the trimmings and all the whatever else. And I can't just wear the normal clothes. It's got to be designer label. If it's not designer label, then I'm not. I'm worthless. Not worthless, I'm worth less than I the worth that I've attributed to myself. But that's what entitlement's about. Entitlement is about that I should be able to do this, and I should be able to do that, and no one should tell me what to do, and I should make decisions for myself, and so and so owes me this. That's what entitlement's about. And unfortunately, because we don't use those that nervous system that we're, we're in that scenario. So let's say, for example, someone's, we, you know, we have an issue with our mum or our dad. Let's say, start off with mum. Mum, let's say, for example, mum, she's aggro. Some women, some mothers are aggro. Whatever, for whatever reason, what it is, they just, they're just taking out their frustrations on their kids. They're better than taking out on their husband, if you're a husband anyway. If you're a kid, probably not. So the, the thing is, when they, when they, when something happens, when something goes on, that what happens is, they yell and scream and carry on and do whatever at their kids. And we don't like that. And it's wrong. I'm not, I'm not saying that it's right. I don't think for a second that I'm, I'm implying that it's right. It's wrong. Okay? It's an oppressive thing. But go back to Sabot, which category would that fall into? 1, 2, 3A, 3B or 4? 3B. 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 Alright? Why 3B? Fadl. Alright? So... There's the sabr right there. The sabr is there, 3B. Right? You've got to be patient with the things that Allah sends you that you don't like from people. 
And what's on the, what's, where's the shukr side of it? You tell me where the shukr, millennials out there, tell me where the shukr is with regards to that. Can we work, example, like think about it yourself. Now you have to actually think and come up. When you feel good afterwards, you should become thankful and shukr. Right, that's good if you, if you hang on to your mother's, you hang on to yourself, you self-discipline yourself. Okay, but look at the specific situation. My mum's got this one bad quality. Someone's mum's got this one bad quality. She yells, she goes off at any little tiny thing. Where can I find shukr in my relationship with my mother? What a stable relationship. You've got a mother. You've got Be thankful you have a mother. Other qualities. Be thankful you have a mother. Have a, okay? That's where the shukr comes into it. But we don't have that because we're entitled. Who is she? To talk to me. That, that's the reality. I know, like, again, the truth hurts. If I'm having that started out like that, that wasn't unintentional. That was unintentional. Truth hurts. But when something doesn't go our way, it's so and so. I wish she was dead and then thought that to yourself about. No, no, not you. Anyone, someone, you know, for example. They think that to their mum or their dad. I wish I wasn't here. I wish there was someone else was my mum. So and so's mum is better than my mum. Hey, what, what do you mean? There are mums that are on drugs. I've read their reports that they have hallucinations and whatever, and they put their cigarettes out on their kids. Some kids in poor countries, they're only worth dollars. Their mums sell them off. Yeah, some kids... That's what happens. Prostitution, both boy and girls, not just boys or not just girls, they're too poor to survive. Or in some countries, you know, different... So, do I have scope in my life to be grateful that my mum yells at me? Say what? Yeah or no? My life is, my mum's setting me on fire? So you, what, is that hard? Serious? No, she's not. She's feeding me every day, isn't she? More than likely. Alright? She doesn't beat me. She doesn't wake me up in the middle of the night and cut me. She doesn't sell me for, to, for her to survive, does she? No. She doesn't send me off to a voodoo, you know, thing, sacrifice a virgin. Or, that goes on in the world. Right? She doesn't marry me off to a 50-year-old bloke because she can't afford to look after me. That's the reality. Is it right or not right? Do you agree or don't agree? Does anyone not agree? Does anyone not agree? So that, that's the door. That's the door. Yeah, my mum's not perfect. Is there anyone that's perfect? No. Sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Full stop. It's over. There's no... So what? I'm going to... Judge my mum, my dad, well, we'll come back to that after, after Sunday, inshallah. I'm going to judge my mum and say, she's bad because I didn't get what I wanted from... Come on. That's, that's entitlement. That's entitlement. So that's the, the point where we just finished is about our entitlement. And we all, we all have it. Irrespect. Imagine if the, the Wi-Fi goes out or the, whatever, the, the mobile phone service provider that we're with, when it cuts out for a few minutes, how do we feel? Feel robbed. Because we feel that it's my right to have it. It's my right to have it. That's what we feel. And it's good to have it. I'm just giving it as an example. So we can understand the feelings that go along with the attachment that we have. And it's the same thing with our parents, you know. It's, a, it's an easy example to deal with. So go back to the mum. That Go back to the definition. They say, Arfan al-Ihsan وَنَشْرَهُ To know someone's ihsan, right? Someone's favour on us, you might say, or someone, something good someone's done. And what did Allah SWT say? وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا So Allah SWT says, be excellent, be good to your parents. That's, that's the way to do it. So your mum does something bad, like that you don't like. No one's perfect, are they? Is anyone perfect? We left on that point, didn't we? No one's perfect except who? And do we all agree to that? Are you perfect? Am I? No, no, I'm just perfect. So how can we expect our parents to be perfect? Mum is the example we had. She's not perfect. She's stressed out. She's tired. She's frustrated. She's angry. She's hungry. She's angry. Whatever, whatever she's happening is happening. Just like it happens to you. When you make a mistake, you don't want people to get on your back, do you? Until you made that mistake, especially when you say sorry, and you didn't mean it, and it was not on purpose and you weren't trying to be vindictive or difficult or whatever. So what about your parents? When Allah SWT says, what I taqul lahuma? Uff. They even say, uff. Uff. 
That's what he's... Oh, can you go and get this? Oh, pfft. Not even allowed to say that. Not even allowed to say that. All the dads are going, yeah, see? That's it. All the mums are going, yeah, you know? That's, the, that's what Allah. Why? So you can know how to worship Allah. So you can start to build gratitude from there. Gratitude, shukr. Otherwise, if we're not, then we're not, not happy with our mums, not happy with our dads. Guess what? Then we're not happy with Allah and then not happy with ourselves. Don't worry about it. Like it's for our own benefit. It's not for like Allah wants to like punish. He made us. Imagine that. He made us to punish us or torture us or, or agonize us or make us sad and depressed and anxious. And, and It's not what He made us for. He made us to worship Him. And if we worship Him, we'll be happy. It's, that's what's made inside of us. Whoever doesn't worship Allah, they won't be happy. And if they're happy in this life, which is a very, very fair few, very, very minimum, certainly won't be happy in the next life. So the way to keep that ihsan, imagine if that happens, Imam yells at you, carries on, does something silly, does something that you don't like, does something that you know is wrong. Don't go tell her she's wrong. What do you do? Like now I've given you the insight. What should you do learning this data? You haven't learnt it yet, but thinking ahead, what should you do? Right? And do what? So that's the first thing. Think of the good qualities of Imam. What's the second part? Sorry? Yeah, okay, you can do that, but according to the Dadas. Alright, that's the first part. So you recognize the good things, thank the law for those good things, then what? Stay patient. Hold yourself back. Someone said something? Forgive. Yeah, forgive, yep. And what else? Yeah, you can do that, that's excellent. Before that, tell her. Isn't that the definition? To recognize. Uh, uh, one's excellence upon a person and to spread it out to tell people go tell her so when she's done say try this not just with your mum with anyone anyone that's up so what do we do when someone does something bad with us like someone whatever they tell us uh, they tell us rack off leave me alone what do we do back yeah you rack off you double rack off isn't that right yeah or no that's, if we don't say it, that, is that how we feel? Or not? Someone pushes you, you want to push them harder. Someone bumps you, you want to bump them harder. But unfortunately, that's not the prophetic way. Is it? And we know it's not. But we want to learn practically how to implement it. So the, the prophetic way, is, what does it say, subhanahu wa ta'ala? It says, Idfa billatihi ahsa. In, in other words, badir implement, start, do that which is better. So let's say for example, let's say that your mum's the best example because she's soft. Say for example, your mum carries on and whatever, I know, slaps you one, which is not going to happen. But uh, as an example, right? You get shocked. You know, you're upset. <laughs> Go to the mirror. Make sure you put makeup if you're a sister and cover that red spot there. You don't go on Facebook and you don't ring your best friend and tell them all. You don't, you don't go to your, in your journal and write about it. If you're a true believer, or if you're working to that, then you say, "What's this? What's what's this? For, ya Allah, what are you what are you trying to tell me?" So what's he trying to tell you? Right. Three A. When what happens when you do three A? What's the re- effect of that? What's the effect of that? 3A. Well, that's 3B, sorry. 3B. My bad. It's 3B. What happens when you do 3B? That's alright. What's 3B? No, what did you say? Okay, which is what? Summed up as what? Akhlaq. Disposition. Right? Uh, you did your test two weeks ago. What's going on? <laughs> Vitamin D, sisters and brothers. Get out there and get in the sun. Summer. Right? <laughs> Akhlaq. Akhlaq. This is not what you want. Like, don't, you don't worry about anyone else. Don't you want to like, have a character, a disposition that allows you just to be happy all the time and be able to deal with all your problems without resorting to, you know... Uh, yelling and screaming and carrying on or you know going to see doctors or taking medicine or taking drugs or or you know 
doing dangerous things. There's not what you want. That's what I want. I want to be able to deal with myself before I want to deal with anyone else. That's akhlaq. So, what does the person with akhlaq do? First one is what? What's the first one? First part. The first part is three what? B, which is what? Sabr, which is what in English? Discipline yourself, son. Don't get excited. Don't get angry. And what's part of 3B? You don't want what? You don't want to do what to that person if they take your... Right, and retaliate. Exactly. You want to harm and retaliate. It's part of it. Yeah or no? We all agreed to that. Right? Yep. So, that's gone. All right? The anger, the frustration. It's gone now. What's the second part of it? You go and say, no? Right. Be grateful to who? Right. And then in the situation where the mum hit, slaps you, to who? Right. Go okay, say, mum, you're the best mum. Imagine you did that. <laughs> Not when she's angry. Not when she's angry. When things calm down, yeah, probably you're right. Okay, but when things calm down, and I gave an extreme example, but your mum yells and carries on, go and give your mum a kiss and a hug and tell her, mum, you're the best. She's going to say, why? I just slapped you. And you say, because you do this and you did this and you do that and this and you carried me for nine months and you looked after me and you breastfed me and you changed my nappies and you fed me the best food and you clothed me and you looked after me and you cuddled me and you hugged me and when I cried, you wiped my tears and when I scuffed my knee, you wiped, you fixed up my... And she said, what's she going to do then? She said, yeah, good. <laughs> and that's it, beautiful. What, is she going to hug you and tell you I love you? Isn't that what you want? Yeah? Isn't that what you want from your mum? That's what I want my mum to do. I'm 50 nearly. Of course I want my mum to hug me and kiss me. Tell me that she loves me. She's my mum. That's what I want more than anything from my mum. That's all I want from her. I don't want anything else from her. Isn't that what you want from your mum? There's the way. Prophetic way. That's the prophetic way. And what do you get out of it? Proximity and in this to Allah. And then there's your dad. Dad's a bit harsher. He's a bit rough and tumble. You know, whatever. Why he says something to you, he upsets you, he does something. I wish I didn't have a dad. Why did my dad do that? My dad's not good enough. So and so's dad's better. My dad, whatever, whatever the case is, I wish I had the t- you know the TV dad. I think TV dads are terrible these days. But when I was young, TV dads were all right. You know, now they're all buffoons and overweight and they do stupid things because that's how they that's how they want to show dads. That's how they want. And I mean, cartoon in particular, but also the other ones. Our, our dad, the dads we had, you know, were like um, on TV shows and that. What was that show called? Growing Pains. He's like a psychologist, you know, he knows the answers. He's nice with his, his missus, is professional, she works and looks after the kids. Like, you know, okay, the dads, you know, that they were, they was the breaking of women into society in terms of working and things. So now dads these days are like Homer Simpson and the family guy and what's the other, American dad. They're just stupid. You know, they're idiots. You know, so... What well, there's a reason behind that. It's not by accident. You know, even the guy on uh, Modern Family, the dad, is an idiot. He's a dope. He always does stupid things, and you know, that's 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 by design. That's not by accident. That's not by accident. It's to break the the, the basis of society. It's to break the the hierarchy. And some, it's not the right word, but you know, to the basis of the family structure. And then once dad hasn't got any, you know, that's to, he's a dope, and mum knows everything, then. That's it. I'm let everyone do whatever they want then after that. And that's, there's, a, there's a reality to it. That's, that's the way we see things anyway as Muslims. So, is that what we're doing? We, are we calling him Do or Homa or whatever? That's what we tend to do with our fathers. We don't tend to ridicule our mothers. We get upset with our mothers, but we try and ridicule our fathers because I know more than you. Because we want that love and emotion from our mothers. That's what we want, nurturing. That's the natural state of things. But from our dad, we expect our dad to show us the world and defend us and protect us and, you know, guide us. And when he can't, we're like, uh, what a dope. Yeah, that, that's what's going on, in my view, anyway. So, what happens when dad doesn't perform to our expectations? Is he a bad dad and maybe we should call the cops or something, I don't know, have him arrested or maybe, you know, I, I don't know. Like, so, why, doesn't do nothing else for us? Do you, you, you reckon dad likes to go leave home at 5 in the morning or 6 in the morning and come home tired at 6 in the evening and do a job that he probably hates? I know we love money and we love working and 
it seems to be the goal. But do you reckon that he, your dad, uh, my dad, my dad, I mean, if he's, my dad used to come home so tired. This is the classic. He used to want to like to watch the news. Back then, it wasn't 24-hour news cycles and, and that. So he'd come, he'd watch five minutes and he'd be asleep. And then the Simpsons would come on and we'd take the control and we'd change the channel. And then he'd wake up and he'd be like, well, what's going, put it back and like, you're asleep. He'd no, I wasn't, I wasn't asleep. It's too tired, the bloke. What, you think he does that for fun? My dad used to climb trees before the days they had climbing equipment, I learned hammer and all these. This is climb tree. He was four stories up in the tree. They didn't have ropes, they didn't have nothing. So he could put food on the table. Well, you think he wants to risk his life, right? Up in the t- uh, gum tree, four, four stories up. Like he looks this big up there. When he used to climb the tree, people used to come from all the neighborhood, you know, from like up in the North Shore and stuff, to see him up cutting the... No one used to do it. But he didn't have any skills. He couldn't read Arabic. He couldn't read English. He couldn't write Arabic. Couldn't read English. Both of those couldn't read or write Arabic or English. Didn't have any skill set. The farmer. But that's what he did. What? So he can climb a tree and, you know, do the Tarzan thing on the top of the tree. That's not why he did it. He did it for us. So, because he makes a mistake, I'm going to forget all that. Because he does something that I don't like, he's going to forget all that. I'm going to say, oh, don't worry about dad. Don't worry about dad. So, when your dad makes a mistake, how do, how, do you, how do you talk to your dad? If your dad makes a mistake towards you, again, go to 3B, yeah? Being what? Self-restraint, self-discipline in what? The way that other people deal with you. They, they may, human beings, they make, maybe he's tired. Maybe the guy, maybe he's worried about something that you never even considered. Maybe he's worried that the household, he's got no money. And he's not going to tell you he's got no He doesn't want you. Maybe that when you want the latest iPad, he actually goes and borrows money from someone, doesn't tell you about it because he doesn't want you to think less of him than he is. So he goes and borrows money from his mate to buy you the, light, the latest iPad. He has to put himself down and abase himself. It's not nice asking for people for money, right? And maybe he's a professional or he's seen as someone of high standing in the community or something and he puts himself down for your sake. So you can get what you want, not what you need because again, we don't have those needs. Maybe that's what's going on. So, my dad does something that I don't like. How, how should I respond? Firstly, self-restraint. Collect myself. Right? Normally, what dad's normally doing is they're saying no, basically. That's what dad, that's what gets us peeved off about our old men. That you want to go to, whatever, some movie at 10 o'clock at night in the city or whatever, and you don't drive yet, and you want to go on the train, and he's like, yeah, like most dads just don't say no. They're like, oh, why do you want to go? My my days, that's what no, and they just walked away. And then no explanation necessary, and that's it. Just go cop it. But these days, it's like a you know, it's like an expose. Look, baby, you know, if you go there, this is going to happen, darling, and whatever else. And you know, then there's the trains, and then there's drunk people on the trains at night, and whatever, and whatever. And then you're like, no, and it's an argument. It's like you know, it's like the prosecution and the defence. In a, in a court case, uh, like about who, just, the guy's got to reason. He doesn't want you, same, same thing. He doesn't want you not to have a good life. He wants you to be safe. Tell you what your dad doesn't want. He doesn't want to get a call from the, from someone saying, oh, Mr. Ali, yeah, this is Constable so-and-so, your daughter, your son was assaulted by this many people and can you come to the hospital? That, that's really why they don't want you to go. Yeah? Not because they hate you. And because they don't, they don't understand the world you live in and they, they don't want you to have fun. And then they don't want to go to hospital or see you in hospital and then have to recover, have to recover for three months, right? And then every time you hear a, or a, you have a panic attack. Why do you think your dad doesn't want that to happen? Not only for your sake, but he's responsible. He's responsible for you. Even when you're 100, your dad, if he's older and he's still alive, he feels that way. He feels that way. And he feels he's responsible for you. He feels that this is my son, this is my daughter. I've got to make sure I give them the best of me. Once I saw this awesome cartoon, had this dad, and had like uh, boxes taken, a picture of a, you know, the, the body of the dad, and had all these boxes taken out of him. Then I had the son, and he was missing one box. And the dad took the box out, and he was handing it to the son to put into the into the, the right space. That's what our dads do for us. They give, and our mums, but we dealt with mums in that way. That's what they're trying to do for us. So, what dad 
does something wrong, says something, doesn't let you go, because that's always what it is. Doesn't let you go where you want, doesn't let you get what you want, doesn't give you what you want. What? Imagine then, you did the same thing as you do to mum. Dad, you're the best dad. Thank you so much for looking after me. He's going to give it to you. You're going to get what you want anyway, especially with dads. The blokes might not, but certainly the sisters would. Definitely. Dads are much more softer to their, to their daughters than they are to their, to their sons because they want to make the son into a man. You've got to be tough with your son to make him a man. That's the perception. And it's, there's some truth in that. So, you go, Dad, I want to go here. Look, Dad, I don't want to go. But whatever you say is right. I love you, Dad, because I know you've been looking after me for 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 40, 45 years. And I know that you're only out for the best of me. You're only out to look out for what's best for me. What's he going to do? You'll probably start crying, eh? <laughs> you never heard those words before. Never heard those words before. It's like, uh, 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 I gotta go. If he isn't one of those dads that doesn't like to cry in front of you, oh, I gotta get out of you. He'll disappear. The old school dads. Because he doesn't want to show, some of those guys that don't like to show their emotion. And then what? That's why bil walidaini ihsana. That's how we be excellent to our parents. Because the whole point of it is to work up to Allah. Yeah? It's like the practice, because when we're young, we don't know about when we're one and two and three and four and five, and we don't know about God. We know that there's a God, but we don't know, you know, the ins and outs of it, the aqidah, you might say, or the creed of, of our deen, or, or the workings of Allah. We don't know that stuff, but we can work it out with our parents. So Allah is getting us used to it. So later on, when we're away from our parents, something happens, we don't lose it. Because what happens? You go into depression or anxiety. That's like you're the loser. I want it, I love, if I, whether I obey Allah or don't obey Allah, I'm not going to do anything for me. I'm not going to do anything for Allah. I'm fine, but it's going to do something for me. So if I can handle the situation that I'm in by self, by self control and self discipline and then gratitude for the things that I've got rather than concentrating on the things that I don't got, I am going to be happy. Me. I am going to be a happy, stable person that doesn't need medication, that doesn't need, you know, to be put into hospital, that doesn't need to go and see people to help me be nice and calm and, and deal with my situations. Oh, no, Allah, I feel, I feel happy. That's, that's the... That's what Allah made us. And He gave us the, he gave us the Qur'an and He gave us the Prophet of Allah, Alayhi Wasallam, to show us how to live and be happy. And we're the winner. We, are, we become the ultimate winners in this life and the next. But the question is, are we going to put our ego aside? Are we going to put our emotions aside? Or is it always I want to do whatever I want? You do go ahead and do whatever you want. Yeah? Go ahead and do whatever you want and see where it gets you. Go ask Pharaoh. Go ask Haman. Go ask Nimrud. Go ask all these people, the pharaohs and the people and the people. Don't worry about that. Go ask... Who, I don't know, in your generation, Kurt Cobain or Marilyn Monroe or Elvis Presley. I don't know, that's my generation. That's the people. They had everything. They overdosed on drugs. They committed suicide. Right? They had, the way the world looks, what's any examples that you can give from your generation? People don't do that anymore, right? They just. Right? Did he commit suicide? Yeah? Alright? What about he missing the bloke? He's famous. Everyone loves him. He's got money. He's got connections. Or the guy from In Excess, you know, the, 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 the singer. Whatever, Robin Williams, the comedian. These types of people, right? Like, this is an example. On the outside, it looks like they've got everything. But if you don't have Allah, unfortunately, you know, that's, that's how we look at it as Muslims. As tragic as it may be, that's the way we see it. You can't be content. And if you can't be content, you're going to go into the... All those people are diagnosed with depression. All of them, all of them, they're all unfortunately have mentally uh, ill. Is that the politically correct phrase? Mentally ill, right? So we're not, we're not looking down and we're just saying, that's the reality. That's the reality. And Allah's given us a way out of that. It says, لا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون. I'm not making this stuff up. This is straight from the Quran. لا خوف عليهم. What's خوف? Which is anxiety. Right, all the anxiety, depression, you know, all the all the things that go post traumatic stress, all the different orders, disorders, more correctly, they're all based on what fear, which is what 
What's what's fear the fear? What's the con- what's fear the concern of? The future, right? Anxiety is about the future. We're afraid of the future. All right, these are my words. لا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون. It's mentioned several times in the Quran. Okay, لا خوف is about the future. They don't have no anxious about the future. And what about hazan? What's hazan? Depression about? Fear of what? Grief of about what? Past, right? Anxiety is future. Depression is the past. Depression is like, oh, you know, wish that happened. I wish, you know, that this happened my way. And I wish that this happened my way. And I wish and I wish. And if only it, that, that's where that's there. You don't believe in Allah. It's because it's going to happen. And even if you believe in Allah and it's shaky, that's how Allah created us. That's how we created. So it's not for it's not for Allah's benefit in that way. We can't benefit Allah. Allah is complete. Perfect, infallible, free from fault. But it's me. I won't be depressed. I won't be anxious. I won't be upset. I won't be one of those people that, you know, no one knows how to deal with me. Like, do you want to be one of those people that people like they're scared to talk to you because they don't know how you're going to react? Oh, sorry. Can I... Pencil, you want to buy my... Here's my pencil. Take my pencil. Why don't you bring it? Like, there's people like that. There's people like that. You know, you don't know what you, what's going to set them off. You don't know, you don't know what's going to set them off. Is that how you want to go through life? People thinking you're the, I don't know, the, you know, the, the extraordinary human being? Is that, is that what you want? And what for? Why is a person going? Because they want to do what they want. That's it. I put something in my head. I put something in my heart. And I want to do, I want to follow my desires over it. Is that what you want to be? The person that no one knows what's going to come from you if they ask you, Oh, can I look now? I lost my bus pass or whatever. The Opal card. Can I borrow yours? What? Opal? What? Over anything, they just overreact. And guess who? They're not damaging the pet. They're damaging themselves. So that's what that's what this aspect of it is about: the self-discipline and the gratitude. I mean, we got we got to be so grateful, alhamdulillah, for all the things. And man will talk about it anyway. So he says. وَعَلَمْ أَنَّ الشُّكْرَ قَالَ الْمَعَلِفُ رَحِمُهُ اللَّهُ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ وَعَنْكُمْ نَفَعْنَا بِهِ وَبِكُمْ وَعَلَمْ أَنَّ الشُّكْرَ سَبَبٌ لِإِبْقَاءِ النِّعَمِ الْمَوْجُودِ وَوَصِيرَةٌ إِلَى حُصُولِ النِّعَمِ الْمَفْقُودَةِ So he says on one, everyone can see a copy? 115 He says, know that thankfulness leads to the perpetuation of favors already received and to the obtaining of others that are desired so he says know that oh, look I don't think it's thankfulness it's being it's gratitude it's gratitude so can you can you see a copy it says that gratitude leads to perpetuation of favors in other words with Allah Azza when a person is grateful to Allah Azza Allah will give them more Okay, now let's just think about this about ourselves. Okay? Someone comes up to you, and this, we all went to school, you know, in the playground, how when someone gets their lunch out, everyone looks what this person got for lunch. We used to bring like heavy duty lunches, you know, big Lebanese rolls and others. We lived in an area where it was predominantly Anglo Saxon. And they used to try and make fun of us, you know. We used to have the big Lebanese roll, they used to come with like Vegemite on white bread. They're like, bro, my mum loves me, man. I don't know about your mum. <laughs> My mom loves me, you know, so that's how we used to play it off, right? And so everyone's checking it out, this and that. Bro, how about give me some chips? Oh, yeah, take, you know, they used to go, I don't know if they still do those, maybe there's like, you know, a pack of 18 or 20 different types of chips in a bag. Your mom gives you one. You're like, yeah, all right, here, man, take one. He's like, puts his hand in, takes it. Same thing next day. The third day when he asks, are you going to give or not? Maybe, maybe not, Right? But if the guy or girl, the girl, you open the chips, she goes, oh, can I have a twisty? Do they have twisties still? We used to eat those. Pretty nasty. But anyway, they're, they're, um, you know, can I have a twisty? She takes one or two. She goes, oh, thanks. Later on at lunch, she gives you sultanas or Maltesers or whatever. And the next day she comes, she's asking, are you going to give her? And then she gives you whatever, almonds, because we have to be healthy now, eh? And then the next day, are you gonna keep, if she keeps returning the favor, are you going to keep giving her? Yeah or no? Of course. وَلِلَّهِ الْمَثْلُ الْأَعْلَى If Allah gives us, if Allah gives us, and we're thankful, we're grateful to Allah Azza wa Jal, and we show gratitude, is He going to give us more? 
That's what he promises, subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the first thing. And the other one is, he says, وَوَسِيلَةٌ إِلَى الْحُصُولِ عَلَى النِّعَامِ إِلَى الْحُصُولِ النِّعَامِ الْمَفْقُودَ says, and to obtaining of others that are desired. The Arabic's a bit different to that. He says, it's, and it's, it's a wasila, meaning a way. It's also a way. It's not a guarantee. Because maybe that, good, that thing's not good for us. You know? Like one of, the, one, of the, one of the brothers, subhanAllah, that I know, he's a good brother. He prays fast. Everything does good. But he never has money. Never has money. He always comes and borrows money. Alhamdulillah, whatever. Ask me. And then in the end, you know, he used to complain, 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 complain. I go, bro, there's something going on. Come, let's talk. He's like, what do you mean? I said, there's something going on. There's something in your life that is not good for you to have money. He's like, what do you mean? I said, well, that's why you don't always have money. Because if you had a lot of money, it'd get you in trouble. And he's like, how do you know? I said, well, because you're always in that situation. As far as I know, he's a good bloke. But he never has money. He's like, yeah, and he told me about the days before he knew about Dean. He's an older bloke. And he goes, yeah, when I had money, I did this and I did that. And I was like, oh my goodness. Like, it was amazingly bad stuff. Right? So that's the reason he doesn't have money. Because if he had money, he might leave the deen. Right? His, his ibadat, his worship, his connection to Allah. And others are the opposite. They always have money. And because if they didn't have money, their connection to Allah and their connection to the deen would wane. So it's different for different people. That's why he says, وَوَسِيلَةٌ إِلَىٰ حُصُولِ النِّعَمَ الْمَفْقُودَ So it's a way, I don't really like that, it says, it's a way to, to gain that which one does not have in terms of favors. It doesn't mention desire here. It says, الْمَفْقُودَ which means that are not there at the moment. مفقود is lost basically or unavailable. Okay? So it's a way, not the only way, Okay, now, let's look, at that. let's look at that in our capitalistic society. How do we think we get more favors, money, cars, houses, <coughs> boats? <coughs> right? But that's just a lie, right? That's, how, do the, how do the rich countries and rich people become richer? Whoa, everyone knows that. Hold on, one at a time. <laughs> one at a time. Right? Exploitation. Now, we, so we do know, mashallah, you guys are switched on. Right? That's, that's, what, that's what capitalism teaches, teaches us. It's the means to the ends. The means justifies the ends or the ends justifies the means. Do whatever you can to get money. Right? Someone, if someone sells, uh, I don't condone it of course, but someone does a little crime, they steal, you know, whatever, they steal uh, a hat from a shop and they get caught, two, three, they go to jail. What happened in the, the GFC? It's, you look it up yourself. When the GFC happened in 08, 09, what was going on? This guy stole billions of dollars. Millions. What happened to him? The government, gave, the government gave him more. That's what happened. They didn't even get punished for it. The government gave him more. They got more money. You know, bailouts and handouts and whatever it was from the United States or from Australia. So where's the justice in that? There is no justice. The more, the more money you got, the, the more you can get. Basically, that's, you know, the police are out there to catch you and I not getting a train ticket, but they're not watching insider trading or the bribes that go on on, on a massive scale on multi, you know, trillion dollar deals and multinational companies in other countries doing whatever they're doing, poisoning the rivers, whatever, 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 whatever. That's the reality. Because money, that's what makes, but what is, what does Allah Subhanahu wa say? So basically, capitalism is basically telling us, do whatever you have to do. Exploit whoever you can to what? Get more. What does Allah say to you? He says, yeah, it's not a guarantee to get more. And how do you maintain what you've got? Be grateful. Just be grateful, Allah Subhanahu wa saying. Be grateful. Be grateful. That's what He's telling us. Be grateful and don't worry about all that other stuff. Don't, don't have to be an exploitive, oppressive, tyrannical human being. You know, like the Congo. Read about the Congo one day. I think it's the king of Belgium. What he did to the Congolese people in the late 19th century, the 19th century, they came and they colonized the country and enslaved the country and killed millions of them. Millions of them. As one example in, in, in you know, Hundreds of examples, or maybe not hundreds, but tens of examples throughout the world. What happened to the people when they were colonized by imperialistic powers? They were doing what? How is, how is America, America? And I don't, like, I don't, I don't have anything against America. 
How, how is... MashaAllah. How is Australia, Australia that's keeping her own backyard? MashaAllah. Convict labour. Uh, why? And we've spoken about it. Why does a person who steals a loaf of bread get deported for 20 years? Does not know what happened or not? Didn't you learn it in school? Think about it. Why? Labour. It's business. It's not law. It's not justice. It's business. How are they going to build this country without that stuff? Oh, the jails, the jails were overflowing. Remember they taught us that? As if, why are they overflowing? Because the poor people are getting put in jail. The person's hungry in Sharia. You know how we cut people with Sharia? The, the punishment for someone stealing is that they get their hand cut off, right? Yeah, but you know how many, there's about 40 conditions. And one of them is if the person's hungry, that doesn't count. Doesn't count. And they're saying that our laws are more barbaric than others. No, they're not. They're more humane, actually. We didn't deport anyone for stealing bread. Actually, in the Islamic system, if someone was stealing bread, it's wajib, an obligation on the, on the ruler, to go to the, the public treasury and get money and give them money to eat. Not deport them for 20 years. Yeah? So, that's how Australia... That's one aspect of the oppression. What's the other aspect of the oppression in Australia? How else do we get Australia the way it is today? killed them, poisoned them, shot them, speared them. Governor Macquarie, Macquarie Street, yeah, what did he do? He got them, he put them up on trees like a crucifixion and he said, I want to put terror in the hearts of... They're the exact words that he uses. I want to put terror in the hearts of the inhabitants. That's what he did. He was a colonialist. Governor. <coughs> Governor of what? Of killing people and maiming people and poisoning people and shooting people and drowning people and raping and pillaging and there was 20 something odd million Aboriginal people in Australia. How many is there now? About as many as there are Muslims. Not many. Right? Where did they go? There's 20 million people from 200 odd years ago. And it's not, hey, I don't hate Australia. I love Australia. Don't get me wrong. Go read Mabo. If you want to read something awesome, go read Mabo versus the Queen, 1992, number two. This is a high court decision about this exact thing. In other words, the high court decided exactly what happened and that's what they said. And it's 200, 300 pages, best decision, you'll, best judgment you'll ever read. Right? So, that's the reality. That's the reality. We have electricity. Where, where did these come from? Me, myself. Where did these come from? India, probably. Who made them? Some poor lady, right, who earns probably a buck or two a day so I can buy the cloth for three or four or five or seven or whatever it is, dollar a metre. Where did this come from? Paper this is printed on. They burnt down a rainforest in the Amazon or in Malaysia or somewhere and it was cheap and they got the trees and they shredded them and they made paper. Right? Where, where, how did these get here? It's because they exploited the Pakistanis and the subcontinent people working on the oil rigs in the Middle East or the Gulf you know, region or wherever it was and they made the oil and they could make plastic from the oil and then they put the oil and they made it into fuel and they put those fuels and they made steel and they made steel. Once they made steel, they powered that steel with fuel and the ships could sail and bring it here. It's cheap. Because if I was to buy these in Australia, they'd probably cost a thousand bucks. Maybe more. I don't know. I don't know. Whatever. But because they're made in China and because of all the petrodollars, they probably cost whatever they cost, 50 bucks or 20 bucks or whatever it is. That's the reality of capitalism. And whoever wants to deny that is pulling the wool over their eyes. That's, that's the reality of it. And we live in that system. That why do we have electricity? Because some poor person goes into a coal in some country somewhere and they bring it. Most of our coal from Australia. And then Wollongong or wherever it was, and, you know, and they're working there for 10 hours or 11 hours in the dark, two kilometres underground. So it can be pulled out and we can have power. We've still got coal powered you know, electricity plants in Australia. I know it's a bit depressing, but that's, the, again, the truth. It's not nice because we don't live nice. And Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala says, what? Have gratitude and you'll be all right. Have gratitude and whatever faith is in it says, قَالَ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى لَإِنْ شَكَرْتَكُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ وَاللَّهُ تَعَالَى أَكْرَمُ مِنْ أَنْ يَنْزَعَ نِعْمَتَهُ نِعْمَهُ عَنْ الشَّاكِرُ وَقَالَ تَعَالَى ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّ اللَّهَ لَمْ يَكُنْ مغيرا بنعمة نعمة أنعمها على قوم حتى يغيروا ما بأنفسهم أي 
بترك الشكر عليها وقد أمر الله سبحانه وتعالى عباده بالشكر بشكره في عدة مواضع من من كتابه قال الله سبحانه وتعالى كل من طيبات ما رزقناكم واشكروا لله إن كنتم إياه تعبدون We'll finish on that point. So there's only one more thing. So just keep your attention. So he says, God the Exalted has said, if you give thanks, I shall surely increase you. And then he says, he, he's exalted, he is exalted, is he too generous to take away a favor from someone who is thanking him or being grateful to him? He has said, subhanahu wa ta'ala, exalted is he. That is because God never changes a blessing that, that he has bestowed on any people until they first change that is with that which is Excuse me, in themselves. Okay? So there's two things there. La in shakartum, la azidan. It's a promise. If I promise to meet you somewhere at 8.30, almost guarantee I'm going to be late. Almost guarantee. Right? But if Allah promises something, it's 100% guarantee that whatever Allah promises is going to happen. No one can change that. Nothing can change that. Not time, not space, not any other force or power in existence. And that's what he said. Be grateful, I'll increase you. Be grateful about the body you have. We have the body shaming body. I'm not happy with my body. Bloke, guts too big. The sister's butt's too big. Whatever, not happy. My nose is too round. My nose is too straight. My eyes are too big. My eyes are too small. My eyes are too blue. My eyes are too brown. My hair is too long. My hair is too short. My hair is too black. My hair is too blonde. My skin is too white. My Whatever it is, the list goes on. Unfortunately, it's much worse for sisters. Much, 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 much worse for sisters. The, now, it's getting worse for brothers because we have to manscape and all that sort of business and the brothers get their eyebrows done and whatever. Like, I don't know why they do that. It looks so obvious. Like, if a sister does it, does it, you know, like, all right, unless she does that real one line, you know, you can, that can't tell. But the brother does it like, it just stands out like, dude... We know you had a mono brow, it's so obvious. Like, <laughs> what, are you, what, are you, you know, what are you doing that for? Like, anyway, whatever, it's a different story. So, goes back to what? Anxiety, yeah, about the future, and fear, depression about the past. Why? Anxiety about how people are going to think about me, how they're going to look at me. And my, own, my own anxiety, it's a fear that I've got. Because I'm only worried about one thing the physical. I'm only worried about capitalist things. I'm only about materialistic things. Capitalistic society, material. That's all I'm worried about. The exterior appearance. Uh, here's the other one. Like, I know, uh, you know, we don't want to hammer anyone. Or, uh, we just want to talk, talk the reality. Inshallah, as well as far as I understand it and we understand it. You know, even with the dudes that want to become dudettes and the dudettes that want to become dudes. Right? Like, dude. <laughs> You know, if a dude becomes a, a dudette and he goes in the Olympics, he's going to win everything. How's he female? And a dudette that becomes a dude, I don't care how strong she thinks she is, she can't hang with the dudes. So what's really changed? Except their own perception of themselves. That, that's all that's really changed. And even when you look at their relationships, there's always a, a dominant and a submissive or a masculine, even within the same thing. Even within homosexual male relationships and homosexual female relationships, there's always with the females, there's always one that's like, if you want to say butch, like us, like dudes, and there's one that's extra feminine, like dudettes. And same with the dudes. Did I already say that? No. So same with the dudes. One is effeminate and one is extra masculine. It's the same, it's like six of one, half a, half a dozen, in my view, in my mind, of course, you know. It's Australia, everyone's free to do whatever they want to do. This is a country. And even Sharan, everyone makes their own choices and everyone lives by the choices they make and die by the choices they make. I'm, I'm talking about my view in the situation. And if a dude thinks she's going to dominate, go dominate a dude. You know how they have the relationship, male and female. It's not going to happen. And if the dude's going to be effeminate, be more effeminate than a woman. It's not going to happen. Even in various situations, it might be. So, six of one... Half a dozen of the other. It's all about one's own perception of themselves. That's what, the, in my view, that's what the real. I'm not a doctor or a psychologist or a therapist or whatever. That's not me. They're professionals. They know more than me. In my experience, limited as it may be in that capacity. It's only about one's perception of oneself. 
Do I define myself as a male or a female? Do I define myself as an educated person or not an educated person? Do I define myself as a capitalist or a Unitarian? What, what, what my definitions are about myself. And that's what creates my fear and my anxiety. That's what creates my fear and my, my anxiety. Oh, yeah, so the sisters and the brothers that aren't married, oh, what's wrong with me? Nothing wrong with you. It's just your time hasn't come yet. You have to have what? Hey, sober. You have to have sober. You have it, and you're grateful on the other side. Hey, it doesn't matter if you're married or not married. Male or female, female, male, half, half. That doesn't make a difference. Rich, poor. Beautiful, otherwise. Tall, otherwise. Short, otherwise. Masculine otherwise, effeminate otherwise, or feminine otherwise. You're fine with it. Because why? Self-perception. There's no anxiety about what others think about me, which is pretty much the future. And there's no depression about what I think about myself, which is pretty much the past. And Allah's guaranteed it. Those who believe, لا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون. That's, okay. Yeah? And he says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he is more, God is too generous to take away a favour from someone who is thanking him. Uh, wouldn't you be the same? Let's say, for example, I know this is never, ever, 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 ever going to happen, but let's say, for example, you lent someone your phone. I know, alright, I know, sacrilegious. You guys, that's it. Let's say you gave someone, lent someone your phone. Hey, I know, you come like, no, wait, let's get a different example. I know, it's like hard to think about. Hard to think about. You guys, because what you're really doing, what are you giving someone when you give them their fo- your phone? Tell me. Whoa. What is it? And what else? Yeah, you're giving them you. It's like, here, I'm the same. Don't think I'm any different. When someone uses my phone, I'm a bit nervous. I'm like, you know, oh, you want to make a call? Like, where's your phone? You know? I'll buy you a phone. Just don't use my phone. It's okay. Or you haven't got a plan. I'll buy you a plan as well, but just don't touch my phone. That's, and that's what, that's what the goal is with that, eh? So we get so attached to it that we never leave it. But that attachment should be to Allah, that we never feel that. Okay, so let's say for, as an example though, I know, or let's not, it's a bad example. Let's say you sent, lent someone your pen, and they were using it, and they were like, man, let's, uh, that someone loaned money off you, okay, 500 bucks or 1,000 bucks, a lot of money, 10,000, whatever it is. And every time they rang you, they sent you messages, they sent you memes saying, man, I'm going to pay you back. I'm going to pay you back. You're the best. Thank you. Look, I'm, I'm working. Here, look, here's 10 bucks. Here's 20 bucks. Look, here's my, here's my whatever laptop. Hold on to it till I get the money back to you. And then whatever, the, you know, they were told everyone, this is the best person. Everyone's like, man, did you lend so-and-so that money? They're like, oh, well, they said you did and you're a top bloke and a top sister. And Okay? How is that going to be in terms of you asking for that money back? Are you going to like, yeah, you won't. You will ya? You will ya? That's how con artists do things. That's how con artists and salesmen, real estate agents included, no offence to anyone, that's how they do things. Oh, they, they pump you up. Oh, yeah, this day. Oh, yeah, I haven't I seen you. I was just, the other day I rang a real estate agent. Oh, yeah, I was just going to call you. <laughs> what? As if you were. That's what he said to me. Is, I was going to call you this morning, but, you know, I got busy. T- oh, as if you are going to call me. But that's, that's how they do it. That's how they get the sales. Sales people, that's how they, that's how they operate. Right? Now, if someone's genuine, you're lending the money. I mean, if you needed the money, even it's happened to me, and, you know, like, even if you needed the money and the person was grateful for it, you'd be like, like, they're in a stuck. They're stuck. They're trying to, they give me five bucks here, ten bucks here. They're transferring two hundred dollars whenever they can. And their situation is whatever, but they're constantly grateful. Right? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that Allah, he won't take all, he's too generous. As long as a person is grateful for the bounties that that person has been given by Allah, Allah's not going to take those things away. And then the verse, he says, says, because this, that is because God never changes a blessing He has bestowed on any people until they first change that which is in themselves. Right? And so there's two ways people talk about this verse. The, the initial and the right way is what Imam, how Imam, Imam Haddad has used it. That if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given the people blessing, whether it's knowledge, the Qawm Thamud, for example, Qawm Salih, big, brawny, strong, and Hatun al-Biyuta fil-Jibal, 
They used to carve. That's you know in Jordan. I forget what that place is called. Petra. Yeah, Petra. That's the one. You know. So uh, they they you know, did big things and they they were huge. They were strong. They weren't scared of anything. Oh well, kept them. Kept them in that blessing. Kept them in that. Then he sent them Salih alayhi salam. He's like, you have to worship Allah. They're like, nah. We did this ourselves. We're the ones who have the power. This didn't come from Allah. This didn't come from God. This came. This came from us. But let me let me talk, let me talk to let me tell you a different way. That God doesn't exist. We came from nothing. We came from a big bang or a theory of a big bang. We came from a theory of evolution. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala finishes our people off. That's when the, the gifts, the bounties, the favours that those people have had, security, freedom, peace, prosperity, that's when they start to disappear. And that's when their society begins to crumble. And that's what happened to the people of Salih alayhi salam. This little society began to crumble until Allah destroyed them, sent the storm, and that's it. They're all finished, they're all gone. But if they kept on thanking Allah and being grateful, Allah, they would be around till now. Be strong and brawny and whatever, building bridges and we probably could drive to you know, another continent because these guys could build so well. Instead of having to fly, you could drive. There'll be like places to stop on the side, have a picnic, hotels to have a sleep or whatever. Instead of getting jet lagged, just drive your car and fill up on the way or whatever, as an example. That, that, but that wasn't the case when I was there. Shu'aib. Not many of us have heard of Shu'aib. Alayhi salam. They used to, they were uh, merchants and buying and selling and they were wealthy and they were rich what they used to do they used to cheat so in other words when they work for a half an hour they say we work for an hour when they weighed a the kilo they weighed 900 grams when when they measured a meter they measured 90 centimeters and he said you can't do that Allah destroyed him so as long as the people are grateful to Allah right then Allah won't do anything to them that's one way and the other and the most the biggest favor of that is in the deen as long as the people keep their deen and keep their faith, Allah will keep them as they are. Allah will let them have that, that blessing, that bounty. Once they leave it, Allah will take it away from them. And the other way they use it is like what most people use it now, that Allah won't change the people until they change themselves. In other words, Allah won't bring good to them until they start being good. But that's the secondary meaning. Alright? So, that's, that's the door of gratitude. You're the winner. You're happy. No anxiety, no depression. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Muhammad wa alayhi wa sallam Any questions about any of those things? Straightforward So next week How many how many lines do we have to read Because it's not going through As it was previously What's that about seven? Seven lines? Eight? Seven and a half? Right So if you read well, How many is that a day? One Okay It's one line a day so you should be able to memorize it really, but we're not asking that. Just read over it. Try in your life now that we gave the examples of mum and we gave the examples of dad and we gave the examples of Allah and the ni'mah that he sent us. Try and have gratitude. Try and be grateful. Find the good. Yeah? Because when you find the good, you'll go to good. And when you find the bad, you'll go to bad. And that's what we're doing. We're always looking for the negative because we think it's improving. It's perfect. No, what you Improve what Allah has given you. Just accept it. That's, that's, that's a critical thinking and critical analysis and all these things. We, it's true. It's, you've got to be critical in certain circumstances, but not all the time. You be critical when you read that someone's uh, you know, thesis or postulation about a particular thing. Be critical then. But the rest of the time, be what? Grateful, yeah, yeah. Be grateful, right? There's a time to be grateful. Look to find the ni'mah. Look to find what... Look actively. Look. Actively seek it out. Actively comprehend it when you're in the car. Now, how many of these brakes work? How many of these oil in the brakes, if you know anything about brake fluid, and hydraulics to work? So the, what? Rather than, oh, there goes a Rolls Royce or a Bentley or a Ferrari or a Lamborghini, my car's junk. And so, alhamdulillah, be grateful the roads are smooth. Be grateful there isn't... Okay, so that's the, that's the technique. Look for the great... Watch how your life will change. What, I guarantee you. I don't need to guarantee. Allah's already guaranteed it to you. It's a guarantee. Look for the positive. Look for the good and be grateful for it. 
I watch how your life will change. You won't care about anything. You won't care about anything. In other words, you won't be affected negatively by or perturbed or anxious or afraid of anything. You'll be grateful. You'll be looking for the great. Gratefulness. You'll be happy. Inshallah ta'ala. So look for it. And if you've got any nice things to report next week, I'll be happy. Next week's the first, isn't it? First December. We're going to do a maulid inshallah next week, joint with the rest of the um, thing, the rest of the students and classes that are here. So there'll be remembrance of the Prophet of Allah. We'll put something on the Facebook page and you can send it around on the WhatsApp group or whatever. They're going to do a flyer or whatever. So they're going to, do, they're going to read some of the Burda, Qasidat al-Burda, which is Imam al-Busayri. Busiri. He was sick and um, you know he was basically crippled, paralyzed. And um, then one of his uh, teachers said, look, why don't you write a Qasidah poem about the Prophet of Allah. And he wrote it and he saw the Prophet came in his dream and he covered him with like a sheet, a burda, and he called it the burda, to, to, and the next day he woke up, he was fine, mashallah, he was fully cured, so there'll be some recitation of that in Arabic and English, and a bit of talks, and probably some sweets and things, because this is the Rabi' al-Awwal, this is the, the birth month of the Prophet of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and so for us, we celebrate, you know, we celebrate the Prophet of Allah, even, who doesn't, who doesn't like being told, I don't say on Facebook, oh, when someone gets all those happy birthday wishes, how do they feel? I'm so grateful to have these people around me. I'm so happy. What about the Prophet of Allah? He's awla. He's he has priority. Al Rasulu awla bil mu'minina, or al Nabiu awla bil mu'minina min afusihim. The Prophet, Allah SWT says, it's not me, it's Allah it says that the the the, uh, the Prophet has priority over the believers more so than themselves. He has priority priority over themselves, over them who they are. Prophet of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So. We're happy on our birthdays and we get flowers and we get gifts and we get candy or chocolates or whatever and we get whatever, right? What about the Prophet of Allah alayhi salam? Why shouldn't we celebrate? And the Shafi'iyah, that's us, the Shafi'is, me anyway, the Shafi'is say that the, the day the Prophet was born, alayhi salam, is better than Laylatul Qadr. Because Laylatul Qadr, we wouldn't have known about it unless the Prophet told us about it, alayhi salatu salam. And they also say that Laylatul Qadr comes around every year but the birth of the Prophet of Allah happened only on that one occasion. And there were miraculous things that happened in the Prophet in the time he was born, alayhi salatu wasalam. Miraculous events that happened throughout the world. And so, it's not like a celebration, so to speak, of his just his birthday. It's a celebration of him, alayhi salatu wasalam, and his life. And it's a celebration of the deen. And it's, it's a good thing to be charitable in this month. Your neighbours and whatever else, tell them it's the birthday. Because they can understand that. Because they have Christmas, Mahak. Yeah? And Christmas is the birth of who? Isa, and he said, As-salamu alayya, yawma walidtu, yawma umutu, yawma ub'athu, hayya. So he says it. As-salamu alayya, Sayyidina Isa says that, As-salamu alayya, peace be upon me, the day I was born, the day I die, the day I'll be resurrected, or re-sent back alive, resurrected. Yeah, so even Isa, even Isa, in the Neshef, he wouldn't have a problem saying Merry Christmas to someone. Because he says it in the Quran about himself, from the word of Allah Azza wa Jal. So, they can understand that. Oh, it's the birth month. Oh, it's a big celebration for you guys. Oh, it is. You know, it's a good talking point. It's nice to put decorations around your house. If you've got kids, brothers and sisters, whatever, let them know, give them sweets, give them presents as well. It's not like Eid. We only have two Eids. Adha and Fitr, or Fitr and Adha. It's not like that. It's different to that. But it's still a celebration nonetheless. It's not Eid. And so the people in the days they used to feed, back in the days to feed the poor people who send money overseas, whatever. And so we want, we're reminded of the Prophet of Allah, so we can have the akhlaq and we know how be grateful to Allah that He sent us the Prophet of Allah, so to teach us how to act and teach us how to be, so we can be happy, to teach us the way to be happy, inshallah. So that's next week, so you can, what is it, half a line now, because it won't be two weeks till we get back, inshallah, so it's, it's even less to read, bismillah, so but try, then you've got an extra two weeks to try and implement those things, inshallah. Try and implement gratitude into your life. I guarantee you, I guarantee you if you implement it, you will start to become happy. The blackness around your eyes will start to disappear. The cloudiness in your head will start to disappear. The palpitations you have in your heart will start to disappear. The pain in the back of your shoulders will start to disappear. The tension in your hips will start to disappear. The, the lack of mobility in your wrists and your ankles will start to disappear. 
The fountainhead of all illness comes from the, from the soul. And our souls are ill if they're not grateful. Your energy levels will increase. You'll smile more. You'll be able to handle more. You'll be more proactive. You'll be more um, productive. All these things just from being grateful. Tied with somebody. You can't have them left alone. It has to be has to have self discipline attached to it. You can't just be all hee hee happy, no I'm all happy every doesn't work. Because it's fake. It's fake. No one can be happy all the time. But when it's tied with self discipline, you can maintain that. And you know why you, why you're holding yourself. And it's tied with gratitude, that's the ultimate winner. Try it. Something next time that you don't like happens, doesn't go your way, look for the good. Look for, be grateful about that same thing. Even if someone someone has a a car accident. As long as you get out of that without dying, that's something to be grateful about. So look for the grateful part of it. Otherwise people go into shock. They're in shock. Did that just happen? Why did it happen to me? Well, I was driving. I was minding my own business. I wasn't breaking the law. Why should it happen to me? You know, I pay my insurance. I pay, I'm a good person. That's what. I, that's the entitlement. That's the entitlement to go. They're the conversations we have with ourselves. Go, be grateful, and you'll be happy, inshallah. So I said, I'm holding my other stuff.